Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today we'll be continuing our series on painting vast, the mysterious manner with the Warlock. As in previous episodes, we'll use the game art as a guide. This gives us some interesting color combinations to work with, and also will give us an opportunity to do some freehand on the pages of the spellbook. I've already prepped the miniature by filling in gaps and scraping off mold lines. So let's look at the steps we'll follow to get this miniature painted. As before, we'll prime the miniature in black followed by white from above to give us guideline for where the highlight should be. Then we'll do something different and paint the entire face. We're going to do this because the face is hidden under the hat and is kind of hard to reach. So I wanted to get that painted first so that we didn't accidentally hit other parts of the miniature as we paint them up. We'll then continue with the rest of the base colors, followed by some highlighting and shading, just as in the previous episodes. Then to help bring out the cartoon hand-drawn aesthetic, we'll do some dark lining around portions of the miniature, followed by some finishing touches like the non-metallic metal on the wristbands and belt. We'll start off priming the miniature entirely in black. Uh, as usual, I'm using an airbrush for this, which is mainly just out of convenience so I don't have to take the miniature outside, which you would probably want to do if you were going to use a spray can of primer from the craft store or a hardware store. But that works just as well as the airbrush. Next, we'll spray white primer from above. This simulates the light hitting the miniature, like the sun above it in the sky. This will leave the lower parts of the miniature black, but the top part's white and will help us decide where to put our highlights later. We'll start off painting the face of the Warlock. We're going to paint this entirely from start to finish, including shades and highlights. That way we don't mess up the surrounding areas since we need to get into a small area to get this face painted. We'll start laying down a solid base coat of the skin using Hyrule Blue from Scale Color. It's a good rule of thumb to paint the hard to reach places first. That way when you are later on in your model and you need to paint those areas, you're not touching the places that you've already painted and messing up all your hard work. You may need to apply more than one coat to get a nice solid finish. Now we'll paint the underside of the hat with Vallejo model color black gray. Next we'll lay a base coat of sky gray on the character's hair. You can see I've been a bit sloppy in a couple of places getting paint on the underside of the hat and on the collar of the shirt. This isn't a big deal since we're doing the head first and fixing the brim of the hat is pretty easy. Just to add some of the black gray over top of that uh, mistake once it's dry. Next we'll paint the eyes using a mixture of chink orange with orcish dermis. Luckily the eyes are fairly big and are sculpted on the miniature so they're pretty easy to paint. If you do happen to go outside the lines a bit, you can just touch it up with some of the Hyrule Blue skin tone that we used earlier. We'll go back to our black gray and paint in the eyebrows. We'll return to the eyes and add some highlighting by increasing the amount of orcish dermis in our mix with the chink orange. Apply this in a couple of layers, focusing the highlight on the top part of the eyeball. We'll increase the amount of orcish dermis and repeat this several times to build up the highlight gradually. We'll 
we'll apply a final highlight using pure Orcus Dermis. I'm actually going to use a Micron pen by Faber-Castell to draw in the pupils of the eyes. I like using these pens for pupils because of the fine grain control it gives you. But you can also use black paint and a brush as long as you're very careful and have a very fine tip on your brush. We'll just draw very short vertical lines to match the game artwork. Try to make sure they're both facing the same direction and are about the same width. Otherwise it's going to look pretty wonky. Like this. I had to go back and repaint the eyes and then redo the pupils a couple of times before I was happy with how it looked. With the eyes finished, we'll move on to highlighting the face by adding some ivory to the base color Hyrule Blue. This will be applied in the normal places where we usually highlight a face, which includes the nose, the ears, and the cheekbones, a little bit on the forehead. Basically anywhere on your face where you get burned if you're out in the sun for too long. We'll boost the highlights in a couple of layers by continually adding more ivory to the mix and applying it over a slightly smaller area. Next we'll add some highlights to the hair by mixing some ivory into the sky gray. We'll just try to pick out the individual strands of hair. Brighten this up with a little more ivory and apply this to the same parts of the model, just covering slightly less area. We may come back to this later, but for the time being, we'll call the head and face complete. Now we'll move on to painting the rest of the base colors on the miniature. We'll begin by applying Rackarth flesh to the small indentations on the sleeves. We can also use this color for the wrap around the bottom of the hat. Next we'll paint the rest of the shirt with Temple Guard Blue. If it gets a little messy, you can go back in with the Rackarth flesh and refine the edges a little more. You'll probably need at least two coats of this to get even coverage. We'll return to Hyrule Blue, which was the skin tone, and paint the spellbook with this. We'll definitely need a couple of coats here to get good coverage because the book is mostly covered in the black primer since it's facing down towards the floor of the miniature. We'll 
go back to chink orange and paint the gloves and the boots with this. Here I'm painting the boots. The pants here are already painted because I had forgotten to paint them when I did the gloves earlier. We'll also use this orange to paint the squares on what looks to be a shield above his left knee. We'll use the same color to paint in the orangish squares of the checker pattern on the front of the miniature. The color in the character art here is pretty desaturated, but I thought going with a more vibrant color would be more interesting. I'm just carefully painting in all of the diamond shapes. You don't need to be extremely accurate here because when we add the dark lining in a later step, it will clean up any of the rough edges that we have. Next, we'll use Iraqi Sand from Vallejo Model Color to paint the pants. We'll also use this color to paint the belt. Now we'll return to Temple Guard Blue and paint the rest of the diamonds on the front of the miniature. Now we'll use Miskatonic Gray from Scale Color to paint the hat and the rest of the cloak. This required two to three coats for me, especially in the areas that were still covered in black primer or where I got some of the black gray overspill. Here I'm using the side of the brush to get a nice crisp edge around the brim of the hat. We'll use this gray to paint the remaining squares on the shield over the left leg. Going back to the Rackarth flesh, we're going to paint the pouches above the right leg and the furry looking thing he's got around his waist. Jumping back to Iraqi Sand, we'll now paint the pages of the spellbook.
Here I'm trying to be extra careful not to get any of the Iraqi sand on the blue, but if you do make a mistake, it's easy enough to go in and touch it up later. Now we'll use some black gray to lay a nice base coat down on the wristbands. This will be enhanced later with a non-metallic steel effect. Before moving on to the next step, I like to go through the entire miniature and make sure that I don't have any mistakes or have gone over the lines in any areas that I didn't want to. Once everything's completely dry, we'll move on to the highlights and shadows. We'll start by highlighting the areas of the miniature that use the Rackarth flesh by mixing in a little ivory. First we'll pick out all the little hairs on the furry skirt. This is something that we could have done with a dry brush, but I figured since the area was so small and I had already base coated a lot of the other areas, it would be a lot less risky to just paint the highlights in manually. I did apply a dry brush to a similarly furry area on the Paladin in episode one, so you can go check that out if you're interested. To boost those highlights up a little bit, we'll add a touch more ivory and reapply it. Try to keep the second layer of highlights down near the bottom of the strands of hair or in the parts that seem to be erased and will be exposed to more light. I'm now moving on to highlighting the pouches. We'll hit the tops and the edges of this and also trace around where the upper flap folds down. I'm going over the wrap at the base of the hat with this as well. Don't worry if the highlights aren't perfect. We will go in later with some dark lining and it should clean up any separation between those. Now I'll use some non-oil to shade the furry part of the miniature. This can be applied liberally over the entire area directly out of the pot. We want this to flow freely into the recesses and it will provide a nice contrast once it dries. Next we'll apply Seraphim Sepia to the pages of the book. This should not only provide separation between the individual pages and on the binding, but will also give the pages a nice worn texture. We want to avoid pooling on the flat top of the pages, so I'm trying to brush that down into the binding. Now we'll shade the belt with some Agrax Earth Shade. Now we'll add some ivory to the sky gray and do some highlights on the hat and the cloak. This will be applied to all the upper portions of the clothing, like the rim around the edge of the collar, the brim of the hat, the tip of the hat, and the shoulders. I'm hitting all the sharp corners with the edge of the brush to do an edge highlight. This will make those areas pop a little bit more. I'm 
concentrating the highlights on the brim of the hat towards the outside and leaving the inside of the hat a little more in shadow. For the upper portion of the hat, we're putting highlights on the bottom edges of the folds and also adding some highlight to the very, very tip. We'll repeat this just as we did with the other layers, adding a little bit more ivory to the sky gray and covering slightly smaller areas to boost the highlights near the upper parts and the edges. We'll add a touch of highlight to the gray parts of the shield as well. Returning to the Iraqi sand, we'll clean up any mess with the wash on the pages of the book. We want to have a nice clean surface to do some freehand later. Then we'll mix in some ivory and highlight the pants. Again, we'll just hit the upper facing areas with this. We're going fairly subtle on the highlights on this miniature and not providing a ton of contrast because I'm trying to maintain the aesthetic from the game artwork. That sort of hand-drawn, cartoonish style. And we're going to rely on dark lining to really make that effect stand out. Here I'm using this to pick out all the little bumps on the texture of the belt. I forgot to paint the belt buckle earlier, so we'll hit that with some black gray now. We'll go back to our chink orange and mix in a little bit more of the orcish dermis, and we'll use this to highlight any of the orange squares on the cloak and on the shield. gloves in the game art have this dirty dusty effect on them so we're going to actually mix some Iraqi sand in with the chink orange to do the highlights there. This gets applied to the raised areas and onto each finger and knuckle. can use the same mix to highlight the feet. We'll mix in some more Iraqi sand and repeat this process a couple of times. This is one of the few areas on the game art where there is quite a bit of contrast, so we will boost these highlights a bit more than the other ones on the miniature.
Next we'll highlight the blue areas of the tunic and the sleeves by mixing some sky gray into the temple guard blue. We'll layer the highlight up a couple of times by progressively adding more sky gray. And we'll be sure to hit the little latch on the pouch with black gray. Now to really sell the hand drawn look we'll add some dark lining around the entire miniature. To do this we'll dilute some black ink with a little bit of water. Make sure you dab off any additional liquid onto a paper towel before touching it to the miniature, otherwise the ink will run out of control. Now we'll just simply draw a line along any separation on the miniature between different materials or pieces of fabric or even to emphasize recesses or areas of shadow. This process can be time consuming, but I think the results are well worth the effort. Be sure to get in there and separate between all of the little checkers on the shield and on the tunic. Here I'm lining between the wrappings on the hat. Adding lining between the fingers and around the wrists will help reinforce the hand-drawn look. Here I'm adding a dark line between the pages and the cover of the book. Finally, we'll reinforce the separation between the eyes and the face and the hair and the skin 
by doing a little bit of dark lining around the portions of the character's face. That wraps up all the dark lining. Now I just inspect the miniature to look for places where the lining got a little thick or it went out of the lines. And I go back with the base colors off camera and repair those areas. Now it's time to add some finishing touches. The Warlock's hair in the game artwork is very white. So I'm actually going back through and touching up the highlights with a little bit of pure white from Vallejo model color. Now it's time to be brave and do some freehand on the pages of the book. I've decided to take inspiration from the game components and I thought it would make sense to draw some of the icons from the Warlock's player card onto the spell book like he's reading those spells out of the book. I decided to use the Siphon icon and the Summon Poltergeist icon. Those looked to me to be the simplest ones to draw. To do this, we'll use some Hall Red mixed with some Liquitex Flow Aid. This lets the paint flow off the brush like ink off of a pen and gives us a lot of control over the strokes that we make. Make sure you wick off any excess liquid on a paper towel before you start drawing on the miniature. We'll start by drawing a solid circle right in the center of the first page. This will be the start of our siphon icon. I'm starting small and gradually growing the circle out larger, trying to keep it as round as possible. I apologize for the low quality of these shots. It was pretty difficult to get the camera at an angle that would work while having the miniature so close to my face to make sure I was being accurate. Now we'll try approximating this shape for the Summon Poltergeist page. While it may seem a bit intimidating, we'll break it down into constituent pieces that by themselves are very easy to paint. We'll start with the head, which is essentially a teardrop shaped blob. I'm starting by drawing a small line and then sort of widening it at the bottom to get the basic shape. The body is just a wide U-shaped swoosh, and the sword we can do with just a couple of lines to approximate it. I'm starting with just a simple line for the body going across, and then another simple line going up for the sword. Now you can add a little bit more thickness to the body. To add the legs, we'll simply create some L shapes. The Warlock's hat was sort of in the way for a lot of this, so sorry I couldn't show you more of the process. Here's where we're at with the red applied. Now we'll fill in the open spots like the X and the mouth and eyes of the poltergeist with some Iraqi sand. Again, we'll mix this with some Flow Aid so it comes off nicely and wick off the excess on a paper towel. And now I got in the way of the camera so you can't see me actually doing it. Here's a look at the completed freehand. You can see I added some hash marks at the bottom just to indicate some text on the page and a couple of dots in the corners to add some flavor. Now we'll paint the steel areas of the miniature. That would be the wristbands and the belt buckle. We'll use a non-metallic metal effect for this. Here I'm creating a gradient between black, gray, and white. We'll grab something out of the mid-tone to start off with on the wristbands. I plan to put a spot of light at the tip of each spike and one or two glints of light on the band itself. Since these elements are so small, we don't really need to have that smooth of a transition between the light. We really just need hints of going from the black gray to darker gray up to white. Here I decided to add pure white to the areas where I definitely want the glints to sketch in where they're going to go. I probably should have done this first. Now it's just a matter of smoothing the transition a little bit by pulling color from the midtones. You 
You may need to go back and forth between some dark tones and light tones to get it the way you want. Now to really sell the effect, we'll grab one of our lightest tones and use that to edge highlight around the entire area of metal. We'll repeat this same metal process on the belt buckle. The transitions can be even less smooth here since the belt buckle is such a small element. I decided to give a little more depth to the hair by shading it using some Citadel contrast paint. I'm using apothecary white here. This can be applied just like a wash letting it flow into the recesses, and it should leave the upper highlighted areas pretty much untouched. Taking a final look at the character artwork, it looks like some areas of the gray have some wear and tear on them. I'll simulate this by covering those areas with some Fugan orange. Anywhere there are creases or tears in the fabric, I'm just adding a touch of this. Just like in the previous episodes, I'm going simple on the base, and I'm just going to paint it the same color as the character components. In this case, we'll use Mechanicus Standard Gray to paint the base. You may need two coats to get solid coverage. We'll finish off the base by painting the edge in pure black. Upon final inspection, I felt like the sleeves were lacking some definition, so I quickly went in with some non-oil and shaded down the areas of Rackarth flesh. Those are the little indentations that we did in the lighter color. We'll protect the miniature with a final spray of Tester's Spray Lacquer. And this concludes the Warlock. Thank you so much for watching Board with Paint. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe to my channel. Click the notification icon so that you know whenever I release a new episode. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And let me know in the comments which character from Vast you'd like me to cover next. Until next time, happy painting.